Adultery, a cross-cultural and religious examination of a complex moral issue. Adultery, a nearly universal concern, has been a complex and multifaceted issue throughout history, shaping the moral fabric of various cultures and religions. Often colloquially referred to as cheating or infidelity, adultery is distinct from fornication and holds significant implications within Judaic, Christian, Muslim, and Roman legal frameworks. In its simplest definition, adultery occurs when a married individual engages in sexual relations with someone other than their spouse. While marriage is a requisite for an action to be labeled adultery, the key element lies in the extramarital nature of the relationship between the cheating couple. Cases where spouses agree to seek sexual pleasure outside their marriages are known as open marriages, but even with consent, most legal and religious authorities still view such activities as adulterous. However, defining adultery is not as straightforward as it may seem, as the boundaries and implications of the term heavily depend on historical, legal, and cultural contexts. Different jurisdictions and eras offer varying definitions, leading to complex interpretations and potential double standards particularly with regard to the treatment of men and women in adulterous relationships. The concept of property often underlies secular definitions of adultery, wherein the marriage bond grants partners specific rights to one another. The violation of these rights through infidelity can be likened to a form of larceny. In dynastic models, adultery questions a man's right to legitimate heirs, while more companionate models focus on the right to exclusive enjoyment of the relationship. In some cases, adultery is considered a crime against the state, reflecting the belief that individual acts of adultery can undermine society as a whole. The complexity of adultery's definition extends beyond legal frameworks. Religions, cultural norms, and societal values also shape the understanding and consequences of adultery. As we delve into the attitudes towards adultery in different countries and religions, we gain a deeper appreciation for the profound impact this issue has had on human relationships and societal structures. By examining how various cultures and belief systems approach and address adultery, we can better understand the broader implications of this complex moral issue. Adultery in Judaism and Christianity Adultery, the act of engaging in sexual relations outside of a committed marital relationship, has been a subject of moral and religious concern across various cultures and belief systems. Let us explore the attitudes towards adultery in different countries and religions, delving into the historical and religious contexts that have shaped these perspectives. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, adultery is strictly prohibited and holds a significant place in the Decalogue, commonly known as the Ten Commandments. The sixth or seventh mitzvah commands against committing adultery, alongside other moral injunctions. King David, a revered figure in Hebrew scriptures, is famously associated with an adulterous affair with Bathsheba, leading to severe consequences as narrated in 1 Samuel. This portrayal highlights the gravity with which adultery was regarded, even when involving influential figures. Within the Talmudic thinking, the prohibition against adultery ranks among the strongest, alongside those against murder and idolatry. Adultery, along with incest, is considered one of the three most severe violations of God's law. In Deuteronomy, the punishment for an adulterous couple is death, reflecting the ancient society's stringent stance on preserving social order and purity. The notion of purging impurity from the community through severe punishment underscores the seriousness of adultery in ancient Israel. Over time, rabbinic law introduced a degree of leniency, gradually abolishing the death penalty for adultery. Instead, Adulteresses were sent away and prevented from reuniting with their partners. Despite this change, adultery remained a transgression against God's ordained social order, and husbands were required to divorce their adulterous spouses, even if they were inclined to forgive them. The complexities of these laws and their application are exemplified in the story of Tamar in Genesis, where cultural practices intersect with notions of adultery and marriage. In the teachings of Jesus within the Christian tradition, the concept of adultery is further expanded. Jesus goes beyond the Deuteronomic tradition to include desires and intentions as part of adultery. His statement that lusting after someone in the heart constitutes adultery underscores the importance of internal purity and self-control. Additionally, Jesus emphasizes the sanctity of marriage, 
stating that any remarriage after divorce, except in cases of infidelity, amounts to adultery. This strict stance demonstrates the significance of the marital bond, equating it to the bond between God and the Church. The Roman Catholic Church's doctrine on adultery draws from Jesus' teachings and early Christian writings on marriage. Catholicism does not permit absolute divorce for marriages sanctioned by the Church, as it conflicts with Jesus' rejection of divorce. Instead, the concept of a limited divorce, where the couple lives apart but the marriage bond remains, is allowed in cases of adultery. Canon law stipulates that the offended party must seek redress within six months of discovering the infidelity. Otherwise, they are assumed to have condoned or forgiven the transgression. In practice, the Catholic Church has, at times, granted annulments, declaring that a true marriage never existed, although this doctrinally differs from divorce. This approach allows the couple to remarry elsewhere. The tension between doctrinal principles and pastoral considerations highlights the complexities faced by religious institutions when dealing with real-life situations of adultery and its consequences. Throughout history, attitudes toward adultery have been shaped by cultural norms and religious beliefs. Understanding these varied perspectives can shed light on how different societies approach and deal with this complex aspect of human relationships. By exploring the views on adultery in different countries and religions, we gain insight into the importance of fidelity and commitment within various cultural contexts. Moreover, these discussions surrounding adultery reflect broader conversations on moral values, ethics, and the complexities of human behavior and desires. As societies evolve and cultural norms shift, the attitudes towards adultery may continue to change, emphasizing the importance of continually reassessing and reevaluating our understanding of this multifaceted issue. Islamic Law and Adultery Islamic law, or sharia, practiced in various Muslim countries, shares a fundamental prohibition against adultery, drawing its basis from the Quran and the traditions of Prophet Muhammad. The gravity of adultery is emphasized in Islamic jurisprudence, categorizing it as one of the had offenses, which are specified as offenses in the Quran, alongside other serious crimes like false accusations of adultery. In traditional Islamic law, the punishment for adultery is Raj M, or death by stoning. However, it's essential to note that the Quran itself does not explicitly prescribe this punishment. The severity of the punishment demands a high standard of evidence under Sharia. This typically involves a voluntary confession or the testimony of four reliable male eyewitnesses to the same act of penetration. Pregnancy is often considered circumstantial evidence and is generally not accepted as reliable proof, except in some specific cases. Different schools of Sharia follow varying interpretations of evidence and defenses against charges of adultery. For instance, the Maliki school in some Nigerian provinces requires proof of rape to entertain a counterclaim. High-profile cases of adultery brought before Sharia courts in Nigeria after 1999 sparked international debates about the treatment of women under Sharia. The Taliban regime in Afghanistan faced widespread criticism for its radical interpretation of Sharia, particularly concerning adultery. Merely being found in the company of a man who was neither her husband nor a close relative could lead to a woman being declared guilty and executed. Although the Taliban lost power in 2001, instances of extreme punishments for adultery continued to be reported, such as the execution of Afghani woman Bibi Amina in 2005. In Iran, since the Islamic Republic came to power in 1979, scores of men and women have been executed for adultery. However, most Islamic countries, as well as many countries in Europe and North America, have laws against adultery, but the burden of proof is set so high that execution is nearly impossible to result from such cases. Instead, jail terms are often imposed, as seen in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where the maximum sentence for adultery conviction is 18 months. It is essential to recognize that imputations of adultery or any doubts about a woman's honor are frequently handled outside of the legal system. So-called honor crimes, involving the execution of offending females by family members, remain common in many countries, further highlighting the complexities and controversies surrounding the application of adultery laws. The attitudes towards adultery within Islamic law reflect a mix of deeply rooted cultural norms, 
interpretations of religious texts, and the influences of social and political factors. This diversity of perspectives demands a nuanced understanding of how Islamic law addresses adultery and its broader implications for individuals and societies in Muslim-majority countries. As we explore the complexities and controversies surrounding adultery within Islamic law, we gain insight into the delicate balance between religious principles and human rights, stimulating critical discussions on the interplay between faith, culture, and justice. Roman Law and Its Legacy Adultery in the Ancient and Modern World Since the time of Augustus, 63 BCE to 14 CE, Roman law treated adultery as a criminal offense, imposing exile as the punishment for adulterers. Under this legal framework, adultery was defined based entirely on the woman's marital status. A wife committed adultery if she engaged in sexual relations with any man other than her husband. However, if the woman was unmarried, her actions were not considered adultery, although penalties might still apply. Augustus's Julian marriage laws included severe consequences for adultery. A father could kill his adulterous daughter, and a husband was justified in killing his wife's paramour. Roman law required the offended husband to prosecute within a specific time frame and mandated the couple's divorce, regardless of the husband's willingness to forgive. Over time, these laws lost popularity, and later emperors softened or ignored them. Nevertheless, the legacy of these laws endured in the form of the Corpus Juris Civilis, compiled during the reign of 6th century Byzantine Emperor Justinian. The Corpus Juris Civilis played a crucial role in the development of canon law, which evolved in 12th century Western Europe. Under Justinian's code, adultery did not apply if the husband was not offended by his wife's infidelity such as when he willingly allowed her to engage in extramarital relations. However, in contrast, canon law treated adultery as an offense regardless of the husband's consent. Canon law, the laws of the Catholic Church courts, held jurisdiction over various offenses, including adultery, wherever Roman Catholicism held sway. For many years, English canon law did not permit divorce, even for adultery, despite the English Reformation separation from the Catholic Church. As the English Church's judicial power waned, adultery became a concern for secular courts, leading to the establishment of a divorce court in England in 1857. At the time, husbands could obtain a divorce for simple adultery, but women were required to prove cruelty or desertion in addition. The Napoleonic Code, promulgated by Napoleon I in 1804, formed the basis for laws in many European countries, including France. It also influenced the laws of regions like Louisiana, New Mexico, and Puerto Rico. The code primarily dealt with matters of property, including those related to marriage and divorce, affecting inheritance and property status. Under the Napoleonic Code, adultery covered extramarital sex on the part of either the husband or the wife. While either spouse could sue for divorce due to adultery, the code imposed more restrictions on women throughout the process. Children conceived through adultery were considered illegitimate under the Napoleonic Code, limiting their claims to inheritance. However, accusations of adultery alone could not be used to disinherit a specific child unless it could be proven that the legal father was absent from his wife during the relevant period before the child's birth. Furthermore, Napoleon's regime promulgated a penal code in 1810, allowing a man to kill his wife and her lover if caught in the act of adultery. Such an allowance was not granted to offended women. The historical developments of Roman law and its successors significantly shaped attitudes towards adultery in various legal systems. The enduring influence of these laws has had far-reaching consequences, impacting marital relationships, property rights, and societal norms. As we explore the ancient roots and modern legacies of adultery laws, we gain valuable insights into the evolution of legal systems and the complexities of moral and social considerations surrounding human relationships. Adultery, an enduring human concern across cultures. Throughout history and across cultures, adultery has remained a persistent and worrisome aspect of human relationships. Despite various legal and religious attempts to address and discourage adulterous activities, the prevalence of such behavior continues to be a cause for concern. China, for instance, revised its marriage law in 2000, recognizing the growing concern over increasing rates of adultery in the country. 
While keeping concubines was once common in pre-communist China, the practice seemed to resurface after the economic reforms of the 1980s. Chinese officials view adultery as conflicting with the principles of proper socialist thought, leading to efforts to curb such behavior. Interestingly, religious reform movements in Muslim and Christian cultures have also grappled with rising adultery rates during similar periods of societal change. This raises an intriguing question. Is adultery an inherent and unchanging aspect of human nature, while a culture's attitudes towards it fluctuate over time? The variable nature of cultural attitudes towards adultery suggests that societal norms and values play a significant role in shaping perceptions and responses to such behavior. Different cultures have diverse views on marriage, fidelity, and the consequences of adultery, which can influence how individuals navigate relationships and infidelity. Adultery is a complex and multifaceted issue that intertwines with religious, legal, and social aspects of human life. Understanding the cultural nuances and historical context surrounding adultery can provide valuable insights into the dynamics of human relationships and the ever-evolving nature of societal norms. As we delve deeper into the cultural, religious, and legal perspectives on adultery, we gain a more comprehensive understanding of the complexities and variations in human behavior and societal responses to infidelity. Acknowledging these differences can help foster empathy and open dialogue ultimately contributing to healthier and more respectful relationships in diverse cultural landscapes. The examination of adultery throughout history and across cultures encourages us to reflect on the universal human concern for fidelity and the ways in which societies grapple with the challenges posed by this deeply ingrained aspect of human nature.